What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Revealed. This week we've changed up the format a little bit. We've ditched the GoPros and put Doug back behind the camera to give you guys um, a better quality, more immersive and in-depth look at what and how we are doing what we do. So if you've been following along, you have seen the Sapili entryway that we have been working on. Now today we're gonna start running the curved crown. This here was the existing crown that was pulled off of the house. You can see that they did theirs in two pieces. So the way that we're going to make ours is in three pieces. We'll have one on the bottom making this cut, one here in the middle making the middle cut, and then one on the top making this last cut. We've already gone and ran the straight returns. So this will give you an idea of exactly what we mean by three layers and each one has a different cut. The reason we have to do that is because this cut is so deep, we can't just do it in, in one pass with one knife. Now that we have our three layers cut to size, we're gonna go ahead and run them through the molder one at a time. And in between each, we'll have to glue up the next layer. So the only layer that really matters size-wise at this point is the bottom layer. This layer is already cut to final width and this will be the base that all of the other parts are cut from. So once we run this layer, we'll go ahead and glue our second layer onto that, let that dry, run the second profile, and then glue on the third layer, let that dry, running the final profile. So with our first layer being the only layer that is really important as far as the width goes, because this is already cut to final width, and this is also going to be the base that all of the other profiles are um, run off of. So when we go to run our first molder, the jig that I'll show you here in a minute, it's already set up to cut at this width. And it will continue that way each pass. So the second piece that we go to put on, we can allow it to hang over the backside a little bit, as long as it's not hanging over on the inside. And we have some flexibility there with width because the front of that cutter is also gonna take off any excess material we have on the front. So we don't have to make that cut very pretty. You can see here, we just used a jigsaw to make that rough cut. When dealing with joints like these, they aren't necessarily the strongest um, in the form that they're at currently. So you can see here, the top two layers are actually each in three pieces with the bottom layer, our first layer. being in one piece. Again, this gives us our base where we can build off of and a firm foundation for when we are turning that piece through our molder. Now I've already gone ahead and set up the molder to match the profile that we're looking for and just used a test piece to make sure our profile was correct before running our final piece. Now that we have our test piece all set up, we can go ahead and take our first layer and start to make those first passes. So the machine that we're gonna to use to cut the profile in is called a molder. Now the jig that we have set up here, if you can see inside, it's curved each way. We have the outside radius as well as the inside radius so that when we are pushing our piece through, it feeds along that angle and we're able to get that nice clean profile cut on our curved pieces. With the first pass done, we're gonna go ahead and make a second pass, which should be our final cut on our first layer. Now that we have the first layer cut, we can go ahead and glue up the second layer. We're using a polyurethane glue just for its uh, extra weatherability. These are really great glues for outdoors and I have had some of the waterproof and weather resistant glues um, fail on me in the past, and I have yet to had a polyurethane glue fail when doing anything like this. When using these glues, 
you are going to want to use gloves. This stuff does stain your skin and it will take days for it to come off. We're going to want to make sure both sides of our surfaces are dust free. And when using polyurethane glues, you actually use water on one side of the uh, glue joint just to dampen the wood and it actually, the water is actually what causes the polyurethane glue to activate. As we're going through and gluing, we're going to do one piece at a time, but we're also going to screw them down as we're going. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my screws, make sure my piece is flush or a little bit proud of the first layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my screws toward the back side so that I'm not gonna run into them when I'm cutting with the next pass on the molder. Don't want to forget to do the edges here as well since that is a surface that will be contacted. We're also going to add a handful of clamps throughout the piece to make sure that we are getting that added pressure. Um, anyway, I was talking about this, maybe you do. So we just unclamp it. Because there's no... Now that our polyurethane glue has had ample time to cure, we can go ahead and pull off all the clamps. And then we did leave our second layer a little bit proud of the first layer. Just gonna go through and clean up some of this excess glue that's on the lower portion since that's where the bearing of my router bit will be riding. You can go back with the router and clean up all of that overhang as well as all the foaming glue. Now with our two layers trimmed flush, we can go back over to our molder and run the profile for the second layer. This profile is made up of three layers and three different cutters. So the first layer we ran with this, the second layer we're going to run with this cutter that's on the machine currently, and finally the last layer we'll run with the third cutter. We're going to do this the same way we did the first. We'll do it in two or three different passes. So it looks like I am getting a little too close for comfort on some of these screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the ones that look like they might get hit. Now that we have the profile of the second layer cut, we can go ahead and glue up the third and final layer. Because this is our final layer, and you will see the face of this board, we're not going to use screws like we did from the second layer into the first. We're just gonna use glue and clamps. This type of clamp here is called a pinch dog. What this type of clamp is used specifically for is to pull a butt joint nice and tight. So basically the tapers on these two teeth are on the inside. So when you tap this into the wood, it pulls this joint closed. Now that we have layer three glued up and clamped, we're gonna go ahead and let that dry before we cut in the third and final profile. With our three layers glued up and the backs trimmed flush, we're ready to take this back over to our molder and cut our third and final profile. Again, we're gonna do this in two to three passes. No 
So as we're sending this through the molder, we're doing it in a few different passes so that we can really dial in our heights and our final adjustments to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. I know it looks like there's a lot of glue left over here. Why didn't the cutters cut that? Remember the cutters, because they are in three pieces, they don't go down far enough to cut all of the glue out of here. So you will see some glue where the cutter missed, but as you can see where there is just wood to wood, it is very smooth and flush. So during each pass, this is exactly what we were looking for, really trying to dial it in and make sure that these pieces were gonna be perfectly flat and smooth, or in this case, curved. Now we're gonna clean up the glue from this piece. We'll do that with some chisels, with some sanding. Then we'll go over and place it on the template. We had to do this with a three-step process. This piece is made from three layers that are glued together with a polyurethane glue so that this separation won't happen again in the future. And the Sapili is going to last outside for years and years to come. This is a huge upgrade for the homeowner and now this entryway will last them a very long time. Now there's only two cuts left to make on this curved crown. We're going to miter the crown here and the straight return so that in the end, we have a nice 90 degree return on each side. Once we have that done, glued up, and we'll prime this crown, this is headed out into the field for installation. So that about does it for this piece of curved crown molding. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Revealed. If you guys have any questions or feedback, be sure to drop them in the comments below. We appreciate it as always. Thanks for watching. You just like straight up my nose? Give me a microphone check. <clears throat> I don't even know what the I'm saying, Doug. I thought I was ready, but I'm not. You're sending me mixed signals, Doug. You didn't say ready. Go doesn't mean ready. Cool. Some deal, bro. You can just tell me to shut up at any time. Dougie blackmail. He already used the Do you really wanna hurt me? Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. All right, Biscuits, you ready? I'm gonna do me. Good. That was terrible. Really good. I liked walking in. That felt good. I said, I hope that's not a delivery for here. An S?